For those of you who are just tuning in, my favorite character at Dragon Ball has just left. Leading us back to Go Goku Go Moping. Because that's exactly what I want to think of when I think of Goku. Kind of like how I, when I watch Ultraman, I tend to want to see him being all sad and depressed. It was morning the next day at the Sun household. But the events of last night still fresh in her mind. Chi Chi somehow managed to find the strength to get herself out of bed. However, she knew some of this strength came in the form of hunger. Last night, she had abruptly left the dinner table with her meal half eaten, was he fought with her husband. Now her stomach was rumbling, begging for some food. As she made her way to the kitchen, she noticed that the house was quiet. Kote was still asleep, and she assumed the same for her husband, though she did not know if he was still there. After she had closed herself off in the bedroom last night, she became oblivious to the outside world. Well, except for her in... The wife's little helper. So for all she knew, she had already made his decision and left. I wouldn't blame him. These thoughts permeated her mind, but she told herself to take everything one step at a time. Right now she had a headache and was very hungry. In order to think rationally, she knew the first thing she had to do was to get some food in her. Therefore, she made herself some breakfast and enjoyed a quiet meal alone. This solitude gave her an opportunity to collect her thoughts and relax a bit before she went through the day. But things were about to start sooner than expected. She just put, finished putting her dishes in the dishwasher. The phone rang. Ring, ring, ring! Ring, ring, ring! Phone call! Phone call! Hello! She answered. Bitch, it's Bulma. There was a hit of her to see her voice. Have you talked to Coco this morning? Hi! <laughs> Cece replied, confused. Listen, it may not be my place, but I think there's something you should know. Goku dropped by capsule court late last night to speak with Vegeta. I overheard their conversation. Bulma began to recount what the two had discussed. How Goku explained to Vegeta what had happened that evening. Damn, Bulma's got some good ears! And what Vegeta had to say in response. It was mentioned that she felt this was something Saintie would want to hear. And she was right. The housewife listened intently to what her friend was telling her. Friend? <laughs> friend? <laughs> No, 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 no. Friends visit. Friends do more than just hang out. Bulma's friend is Goku. Chi Chi's just there. I'm surprised they even knew where Chi Chi lived. As Bulma went on, Chi Chi found that the conversation between the two scientists was providing her with a unique perspective on the overall situation. The fact that Bulma was the one who was relaying this message before Goku could helped her be more open to hearing it. Bulma made sure not to leave out anything that had been said between the two so Chi Chi could get the full picture. Once the story was concluded, Chi Chi paused before responding, That's a really lot to take in! Feel like she had made a mistake, Bulma apologized. I'm so sorry, and I thought you wouldn't want to hear about this. I probably should have said anything. No, no! Chi Chi reasserted her. That's not what I meant. I'm happy you called. I'm still processing it all. I mean, everything's been so chaotic and tense here. I don't know if I would have had the same reaction this came from Goku. Of course you wouldn't, bitch. Hearing this from you helps put everything into a better perspective. I can't thank you enough for telling me all this. There's one thing you should know. Before Goku left, Vegeta told him to go home in training. T.T. remained silent as the thoughts raced through her mind. So you know, she never said anything to her husband about this. And now he was hearing for the first time, along with all this other info. How much did Vegeta reveal? Bulma speculated that this question was on Chi-Chi's mind and continued. He told Goku everything. He told him how Gohan had been training for the past year at night, and during times when everyone was gone, that Gohan had been doing this to prove to him that it's possible to maintain a family and train at the same time. It is! My god! I want to point out something. For the first four years of Gohan's life, Goku had! This is what gets me! For the first four freaking years of Gohan's life, Goku did! He 
did trade in stay in part of Gohan's life. I have evidence. I I have filler arcs that demonstrate this. You're just making bullshit up. Really? All you got is seven years and those two years back to the freeze arc. That's it. Go and been trained with Goku for three years after that. She even discussed how Goku's arrival at Gohan's birthday changed everything. Look, I'm not trying to take sides or pretend to know what it's been like for you or your family for this past year. But let's see, Goku was very upset when he dropped by last night. During the entire conversation, he had this look on his face like he lost it and was searching for answers. Heck, in order to make things better, me and Goku and Vegeta even had a threesome. Man, GT, you are missing out! I know. Is it good that you accepted your fate? <laughs> the only time that changed was when Vegeta mentioned how instinctive it is for a Saiyan to fight in that, in order to live a peaceful lifestyle it's necessary to find a balance. Goku's demeanor teeth were unsaid to contemplate if, as if Vegeta had said something that put his life in better focus. Bulma paused for a moment. TT, I've known you both for over 30 years. So I know Goku loves you just as much as you love him. Again, are you sure about that? Because, really, Goku didn't even know that. Yeah, it reminds you, Chi Chi. He thought marriage was something you eat. As a matter of fact, even if we were to put in the Dragon Ball filler, you only had one date before you got married. And the dub had to add Goku saying, I know, I'm glad my heart knows what was right. That was a dub line. Remember that, Chi-Chi? Remember? Are we sure? Because, if anything, sometimes I feel like Goku was just forced into this by the editors. I understand living with a Saiyan husband can be difficult. With Goku, however, I feel it's been especially difficult because he never knew much about who he was, where he came from, or he... until much later in life. You know, besides the whole mountain thing, you know, living alone with his grandpa, he reminds you that Goku didn't even know what a woman was until Bulma showed up. It took him ages to realize that the best way to check was not to give the cross area a good padding. Although that was hilarious. And no, Craig, Goku walking around and being curious and flipping Palma's skirt does not mean he's horny. He's just curious. There's no horniness about. I'm sorry to say this, but that's the way life is. Some people just are not like that. What's... Raises an interesting thought question. When I look at Dragon Ball all the way through, and I think about Goku's life versus some of the other sort of protagonists, why is it easier for me to believe that Luffy, Naruto, Ichigo, and some of the others could be a bit more romantic, but when I sit down and think about Goku... It's just hard for me to imagine it. It's, no matter how many filler episodes or stuff like that you people will show me, can. It is a question. Oh, and by the way, I remember how Lanny got said in one of the commentaries that uh, Goku is asexual like uh, most uh, shonen protags. Lanny? Oh, actually, no, he said all. <gasps> Lanny? You read Yu Yu Hakusho. Yusuke is not asexual. He flips up Keiko's skirt in the first chapter to get a look at her panties. He fondles her bosom. He makes out with her. He practically sent messages on how he's going out on a date with her. He is not asexual. That dude is very horny for Keiko. I'm sorry to point this out, but not all Shota characters are created equal. What was that? 
That was the sound of thousands of anime fans' minds breaking because of that revelation. Hmm. I think I could break them more. How so? Not all super robot pro tags are like Armoro and Senji. <gasps> Thank you. You do not have to be alone in your struggle. <laughs> sure, Bulma. Sure. <laughs> I really don't believe you. I really do not believe you guys. You know, I mind you, you said it yourself. It was five years in between seeing Goku again at the end of Dragon Ball Z. You apparently did not do anything to go see him again. Krillin apparently never did anything to go see Goku again. During the five years after the 22nd Tenkai Si Budokai, you guys did nothing. To see each other again. You had to have a special day. To see each other again. So no. I don't believe. You. When you tell me that. You would be supporting her. Because I'm. I'm expecting you guys to have to be. Near somewhat near dead before you do that. Maybe Krillin's right. Maybe the only reason you guys ever get together is because some new threat's showing up. Titi struggled not to cry as she took in everything Bulma had told her. Things would say Fatia had made sense, not only to Goku, but to her as well. Looking back on her life with him, she sensed that something was always off, and now she knew. Titi! <laughs> How did you not know Goku's more of a fire than anything else? How did you not know he was a martial artist? Like Vegeta had said, he had an imbalance in his life. While she knew that his choices played a part and he had to take some personal responsibility for the things that happened, she found she could not blame them entirely for what and all the problems surrounding them. You know, Chi Chi, part of this is on you. You used to be a fire, but then you decided not to be. Bulma has more of an excuse because she is not a martial artist. You are not. Chi Chi was no longer angry, but rather thankful. Vegeta had helped Goku understand, and now Bulma helped her understand. She was about to respond when her husband entered the kitchen. I'm going to have to call you back, Bulma, but thank you. Thank you. She said before gently placing the hand down in the receiver. And when she stood up and faced him. What did Bulma want? He asked. Chi Chi didn't respond. She stood there trying to figure out things. After a few moments, she walked up to Goku and wrapped her arms around him. Chi Chi? I want you to stay! Goku became somber. He was still struggling with what to do. Chi Chi had given him an ultimatum like he wanted both, and according to Vegeta, he needed both or more chaos would ensue. I do too, but Chi Chi, listen, last night I went to see Vegeta and. Oh, I know! Mama heard you guys talk, and that's what she was calling me about. Eh? Both says for Tia and I in the backyard. Where was she? The balcony door was open. She loves the eavesdrop. Oh, yeah, I know how much she loves the eavesdrop. Just like when she... When she... When she... No, when has she ever eavesdropped? Goku joined him with a nervous chuckle of his own. Goku, she told me that Vegeta told you how scientists have a primal urge to fight and train, how since he found a balance between leaving a peaceful life and his scientific instincts, but you haven't. You could do more to help, bitch. She also told me how Vegeta told you he doesn't believe you could give up training completely because they'll create another imbalance, so I don't think it's fair for me to ask you to stop training, but, but... She clutched her hands together near her chest as she began to tear up. Goku, I don't want to be without you. Every time you leave, I end up missing you too much. I need you. You, you know, Titi, go get him to fly. 
Goku looked at her apologetically and grabbed her hands. I know, and I'm sorry. A few stray tears made her way down Chi Chi's face as a depressed look came over her. What's wrong? he asked. I just don't see how this could work. Go get to go tank and fly. If you go back to trading at Oop, you'll be so far away. Goten can fly, and I'll have no way to reach you. Okay. Chi-Chi. I wouldn't have so much of a problem with the whole flying bit. If it was shown that it was easy enough for human power level characters like Fidel to learn. I can understand Yajirobe not wanting to learn because he's a lazy bum. That I get. I'm fine. I can understand Mr. Satin not learning how to fly because he's an idiot. Fine. I can even let Mutin Roshi not learning how to fly because he's a lecturer par parver and he's given up training years ago. Fine. I can deal with that. You have no excuse. You mean during the three years that Goku was training, you never once thought to ask, Honey, could you train me to fly? All that time, during five years, you never thought, Goku... Could you train me? That point in time of your life, for five years, you never once, the idea never crossed your mind that maybe, just maybe, learning to fly would help you. You never thought that. It, it, it never crossed your mind. Think you would maybe like to learn how to fly? I don't know whether you are the dumbest bitch in anime, the most useless love interest, or the most worthless piece of shit wife character I've ever seen in anime. And considering that your competition, back in the 80s that is, is a woman who remained dead for for most of the manga's run, and a woman whose main ideas is to stay and be a queen, queen while the boys in armor kicked ass? <gasps> that is a lot to live up to! I wouldn't make a mention of any type of women that popped up in the uh, Marmo class uh, manga, but I don't know about that mention if there were any women in that thing. That was all about learning how to be a man. None of you guys even know what that manga is, do you? You can learn to fly. And as for the I will have no way to reach you, Take your house. Go with Goku. Fly to Oob's village. Set up a new house there. But what about Goten? Go take a go Super Saiyan and fly at speeds up to Mach 5. We have seen Goku traverse most of the planet on Nimbus. In practically a day. A day. If we were to see how little we've actually seen day and night rise during Goku's journey, we could say that finding the Dragon Balls took really, a really short time. Flying around and looking for Cell also took only a day. You do not need 
to worry about this. All you need to do is go there. Get off your ass. My God. Yuri has to tell you to go get a job. That is low. Oh, and for those of you who are listening, in case you're all wondering, the anime he was referring to that features Momotaro is called Sakikake Otokotsuku. It's quite clever and very insane. You should read it if you want to see something fun. Thank you, Trixie. What if you call me if anything comes up? Instead of being gone for such a long time, I only go for a few hours each day. I could teleport back and forth. Yeah, I mean, it's only about one to two hours. You can manage without him for one to two hours or even four hours. I mean, it'd be like going to school and teaching. I thought it was villains that didn't have phone access. Chi Chi, are you really telling me? That you can't deal with Goku being gone for even two hours? You freaking bitch! Oh, wait a minute! I thought whose village didn't have phone access. They have satellite phones. You mean to tell me that this world has flying cars, houses that could be put into little tiny capsules, and satellite phones that could cross space. But the concept of a little cell phone eludes you. I'm sorry, I needed to head to the pharmacy to get my calming downers. Why has it, a cell phone been invented on this yet? Goku laid his hands on his shoulders. Once I'm done training Oob, then I'll train here or with Vegeta. My own time. I promise not to discuss training while I'm home. He was trying to cover all his bases. He wanted this plan to address both their needs. Goku, I need to be sure if you do this, we are going to follow the same pattern we were in before. I need you to promise me you'll be there if we, we need you. I promise, Titi. In fact, if any time you feel this is working, we'll work together and find another way. Titi stared at her husband, a bit surprised. First, he ever put so much time to making sure they were both happy. Before, it was just him, but now it was them. Bumble was right. He didn't want to rectify his mistakes. He did want to change. Okay. Goku hugged her back as he smiled. I only felt things coming into place. Thanks for Tia's guidance. He felt as if all the way to become a better friend, husband, and hopefully a better father. Thank you, Goku. Thank you, Titi. Goku whispered back. So you get him the one thing he wants since his mess started. Another chance. Now he knew how to balance himself to prevent something like this from happening again. Of course, he remained a little scared inside. This was the only option he had. He did not know how things were going to turn out. All you could do right now was take it one step at a time. But deep down, behind the fear of the unknown future, lie determination and spirit. He wasn't going to give up on this. Like what he has said, he refused to lose. Well, uh, so are we done? Are we finished? 